Pregnancy is a miraculous process, but in rare cases, things don't go as planned. One such complication is an ectopic pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy occurs when a fertilized egg implants and begins to grow outside the main cavity of the uterus, which is the proper location for fetal development. In a normal pregnancy, the fertilized egg travels through the fallopian tube and implants in the uterus, where it can develop into a fetus. However, in an ectopic pregnancy, the fertilized egg implants somewhere else, most commonly in the fallopian tube in about 95% of cases. This is why ectopic pregnancies are sometimes referred to as tubal pregnancies. However, in some rare cases, it can also occur in other locations such as the cervix, ovary, or even the abdominal cavity. Unfortunately, an ectopic pregnancy cannot proceed normally. The growing tissue in these abnormal locations can't support the developing embryo, and if left untreated, it can cause life-threatening complications like internal bleeding. For this reason, ectopic pregnancies are considered a medical emergency. Fortunately, ectopic pregnancies are relatively uncommon. They occur in about 1-2% to of all pregnancies, which translates to approximately 100,000 cases in the United States each year. Causes of an ectopic pregnancy In general, anything that disrupts the normal passage of the fertilized egg to the uterus can contribute to an ectopic pregnancy. One of the most significant risk factors is a history of pelvic inflammatory disease. PID is usually caused by sexually transmitted infections like chlamydia or gonorrhea and can lead to scarring of the fallopian tubes. This scarring can narrow the tube, making it harder for the fertilized egg to pass through and increasing the chances of it implanting in the tube. Previous ectopic pregnancies also significantly increase the risk of having another one. Women who have had one ectopic pregnancy have about a 10% chance of having another in future pregnancies. This risk increases with each subsequent ectopic pregnancy. Certain forms of contraception can also play a role. While contraceptives generally reduce the overall risk of pregnancy, including ectopic pregnancies, some methods are associated with a higher proportion of ectopic pregnancies if conception does occur. For example, Women who become pregnant while using an intrauterine device or after having their tubes tied have a higher chance of that pregnancy being ectopic. Fertility treatments, particularly in vitro fertilization, can also increase the risk of ectopic pregnancy. This is partly due to the altered environment in which the fertilized egg is introduced. Smoking is another risk factor for ectopic pregnancy. It's thought that smoking may affect the function of the fallopian tubes, making it more difficult for the fertilized egg to travel to the uterus. Women who smoke have been found to have up to a fourfold increased risk of ectopic pregnancy compared to non-smokers. Age is also a factor, with women over 35 being at higher risk. This may be due to age-related changes in the function of the fallopian tubes. In many cases, however, women who experience an ectopic pregnancy have no identifiable risk factors. Symptoms of an ectopic pregnancy One of the challenges with ectopic pregnancy is that the symptoms can closely resemble those of a normal early pregnancy. In the beginning, a woman may experience the usual signs of pregnancy, such as a missed period, nausea, or breast tenderness. However, as the pregnancy progresses, more serious symptoms may emerge, often between the 6th and 10th week of pregnancy. One of the most common symptoms is abdominal or pelvic pain. This pain is often described as sharp and stabbing, and it may be localized to one side of the abdomen. The pain can come and go initially, but tends to become more severe and persistent as the pregnancy progresses. Vaginal bleeding is another common symptom. This bleeding is often lighter than a normal menstrual period and may be accompanied by abdominal pain. The blood may be darker and more watery than typical menstrual blood. Some women experience shoulder pain, particularly at the tip of the shoulder. This symptom, known as referred pain, occurs when blood from a ruptured ectopic pregnancy irritates the diaphragm, which shares nerve connections with the shoulder. In severe cases, if the fallopian tube ruptures, women may experience sudden, severe abdominal pain accompanied by lightheadedness, fainting, or shock. This is a medical emergency and requires immediate attention. It's important to note that some women with ectopic pregnancies may not experience any symptoms at all, especially in the early stages.
This is why early and regular prenatal care is crucial for all pregnant women. Diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. When a woman presents with symptoms suggestive of an ectopic pregnancy, the doctor will first perform a physical examination. This may include a pelvic exam to check for tenderness or masses in the pelvic area. The doctor will also ask about the woman's medical history and any risk factors for ectopic pregnancy. Blood tests are an important part of the diagnostic process. These tests measure the levels of human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, which is a hormone produced during pregnancy. In a normal pregnancy, HCG levels typically double every 48 to 72 hours in the early weeks. If HCG levels are rising more slowly than expected, it can be a sign of an ectopic pregnancy. However, blood tests alone cannot definitively diagnose an ectopic pregnancy, as slow-rising HCG levels can also occur in some normal pregnancies or in miscarriages. Ultrasound is the primary imaging tool used to diagnose ectopic pregnancies. A transvaginal ultrasound, where the ultrasound probe is inserted into the vagina, can provide detailed images of the uterus and surrounding structures. In a normal pregnancy, a gestational sac should be visible in the uterus when HCG levels reach about 1,500 to 2,000 milli-international units per milliliter. If no gestational sac is seen in the uterus but HCG levels are above this threshold, it raises suspicion for an ectopic pregnancy. In some cases, the ectopic pregnancy may be directly visible on the ultrasound, appearing as a mass outside the uterus, often in one of the fallopian tubes. Treatment for ectopic pregnancy Unlike a normal pregnancy, an ectopic pregnancy cannot develop into a viable fetus, and it poses serious risks to the mother's health if left untreated. So, the goal of treatment is to remove the ectopic tissue while minimizing harm to the woman. There are two main approaches to treating ectopic pregnancies, medications and surgical management. Number 1. Medications. This approach typically involves the use of a drug called methotrexate. This medication works by stopping the cells from dividing, effectively ending the pregnancy. Methotrexate is usually given as an injection and can be effective when the ectopic pregnancy is small and the woman is stable. It allows the tissue to be absorbed back into the body naturally, without the need for surgery. Multiple doses may be needed, and HCG levels will be monitored until they return to zero. Number 2. Surgical Management If the pregnancy is more advanced or if medication isn't appropriate, surgery may be required. Laparoscopy is the most common procedure used, where a small camera, called laparoscope, is inserted through a tiny incision in the abdomen to remove the ectopic tissue. In some cases, the fallopian tube may need to be removed if it has been damaged by the pregnancy. In cases of severe rupture or internal bleeding, emergency surgery with a larger abdominal incision, called laparotomy, may be necessary. After treatment for an ectopic pregnancy, follow-up care is crucial. This typically involves regular blood tests to monitor HCG levels until they return to zero, ensuring that all of the pregnancy tissue has been eliminated. It's important to note that having an ectopic pregnancy doesn't mean a woman can't have a normal pregnancy in the future. Many women go on to have healthy pregnancies after experiencing an ectopic pregnancy, even if they've had one fallopian tube removed. However, these women may be at higher risk for future ectopic pregnancies and should be monitored closely in subsequent pregnancies. Now, we want to hear from you. Have you or someone you know experienced an ectopic pregnancy? What advice or support helped you during that time? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching.